Hello everyone, this video is going to be very interesting and helpful because we are going to compare the Twin Cities Kitchener Waterloo with Brampton. First of all, we will compare the location, how are they located differently, then the population, what kind of people actually live there, then we will see which all different educational institutions are there, which all colleges and universities, then the real estate, if you want to buy a house or maybe you want to rent, we will check out both the prices. And in here, we'll check the trends as well. 2020 was 21 and what can you expect in 2022? Then access to the food and grocery, which is also very important if you're a new immigrant. After that, the safety. Then the cost of living. Which of these two cities are more expensive and which is more affordable? And towards the last, we'll also compare the culture and the lifestyle of these cities. So I'm sure that this video is going to be very helpful for the new immigrants and also for the international students who want to move to Canada and live somewhere around Toronto. Hello everyone, I'm Shitanshu from Dream Abroad helping you immigrate and settle abroad. Okay, let's start this video by comparing the location of these two cities which makes a world of difference. So if I zoom into this map, you'll see that Brampton is right next to Toronto. All of this red line is Toronto and Brampton is right here, which makes it a part of the Greater Toronto Area or GTA. You'll also see the Pearson Airport. All of this right here is Brampton and this is Pearson Airport, which makes it a great location. Then right next to Brampton is Mississauga, which is also a part of the same region, the Peel region which is also a part of the GTA area. Okay, if I talk about the Kitchener and Waterloo, it is located over here. So if I try to zoom in there, you'll see that Kitchener and Waterloo are actually next to each other. Sometimes they're referred to as twin cities because both of them are next to each other and a part of the Waterloo region. And also a part of the Waterloo region is the third city, Cambridge. Fun fact, this is where I live. So to get an idea of how far is Kitchener Waterloo from Toronto. We can check out this location. It generally takes somewhere around one and a half hour to reach from downtown Kitchener to downtown Toronto. While in the case of Brampton, it roughly takes around 40 to 45 minutes. So because of the proximity of Brampton with Toronto, I would say Brampton has a better location than Kitchener or Waterloo. Okay, now let's try and compare the population and the people living in these two cities. So, just to give you a rough idea, this is a website which has a data from 2016 census. So about Brampton, they have to say that there are more immigrants than non-immigrants. And out of all the immigrants, most of them are from India. Also, if we try and look in more detail, then we see that most of the population there is either South Asian or Black. And because this is from 2016 census, this has only grown in the last five years. So it won't be wrong to say that if you go to Brampton, you feel like you're in modern India. It's a mini India. Talking about Kitchener Waterloo Twin Cities, the 2016 census says that it has got around 20% immigrants. But since I moved here more than four years ago in 2017, I have personally seen the immigrant population grow in this area. Thanks to a couple of colleges, the number of international students in this area have increased significantly and also thanks to the pandemic, many people actually moved out from the Toronto and the GTA region and moved to the Kitchener-Waterloo area. So I can definitely say that in 2021, the immigrant population in Kitchener-Waterloo has grown to a bigger number. Okay, now let's compare the real estate market of the two cities. So, of course, location plays a big role when we talk about the real estate. And of course, Brampton being close to Toronto, it has got to be more expensive. So here I've got you a market outlook from 2021 fall. So a couple of months back, and this is from the Remax brokerage. They do publish these kinds of reports every quarter. So if you want to get a single detached in Kitchener, it would be somewhere around nine hundred thousand dollars while in brampton it would cost you 1.2 million dollars so there's a big difference but both the cities have seen big change in the terms of the prices from 2020 to 21 they've seen around 23 to 25 percent rise which is very huge but as i told you it was until the fall of 2021 it was predicted that from september to december 
Kitchener prices will rise 10% more while Brampton will rise only 3% more and there are many predictions that these kind of rise you would see in 2022 as well. You can easily see a rise of 20-25% in both the cities. That was about purchasing but if you want to rent it out then we can also compare the two cities. This is for Kitchener and Brampton. So you see that Brampton is slightly more expensive if you want to get a one bedroom and if you want to get three bedrooms then Brampton is much more expensive. While if we compare Waterloo with Brampton then we see that this difference is slightly smaller but still in Brampton you'd end up paying more. Now, even if you want to buy a house or rent a place your credit score plays a very important role. And it's very crucial for you to know your credit score and monitor it regularly. Here I want to recommend Borrowell because they offer free credit monitoring services. They are a leading fintech organization recognized in Canada and globally as well and trusted by more than a million customers. If you sign up with them for free, then not only you can get to know about your credit score once but regularly. You can get free weekly credit score and report monitoring service, bank level security and personalized financial product recommendations. A great thing about checking your credit score with Borrowell is that it is a soft inquiry and it would not affect your credit score. So I'll provide a link in the description box below. You can click that link, sign up with them and monitor your credit score regularly. Okay, now let's try and compare the cost of living in the two different cities. So as I usually do, I'll take you to the website numbio.com. Here you can compare the cost of living of any two different uh, cities around the world. So in here we see that you would generally need around 5700 Canadian dollars in Brampton to maintain the same life standard as you can have with 5400 Canadian dollars in Kitchener assuming that you're renting in both the cities so which means that Kitchener is slightly more affordable than Brampton if we talk about Waterloo then we see that this difference is even more smaller but still Brampton is slightly more expensive so this was to give you an overall idea if you want to check out the different expenses in restaurants, in groceries, utilities, transportation, you can actually come on to this website to find out more. Okay, now let's see which of these two cities is more safer. Of course, if you're moving to a different country, we at least want to move to a safe city. So let's talk about Kitchener and Waterloo. So if we talk of Kitchener, then the safety index of Kitchener is 60 which is considered very good and the safety index of Waterloo is even better it's around 72. Now if we compare it with Brampton unfortunately the safety index of Brampton is not that good it is around 45 only. If you're living in any of these cities then you would often hear conflicts, fights, accidents all of this negative news about the Brampton city which is definitely not what we want to hear and of course this is one of the prime reasons why the insurance for cars is much more expensive in Brampton than in the other parts of Ontario it won't be wrong to say that Brampton is infamous for rash car driving many car accidents many rules being broken and of course because of that residents have to pay higher car insurance every month. So if we talk about the safety then Kitchener Waterloo are certainly better than Brampton. Okay talking about the educational institutions which all colleges and universities are there in these regions. So talking of Kitchener Waterloo first of all we have the University of Waterloo which is a very reputed uh, university. Then we have another reputed university which is Wilfred Laurier. Then we have Conestoga College which is it has expanded its campus in the last couple of years and it has become huge now. Then we have Trios College here as well. But of course, these are some of the famous colleges and universities that I've listed out here. There are many others. Talking of Brampton now, probably the most famous college there is the Sheridan College. Then you have the Algoma College, the Brampton campus of it. Then we have the Queenswood College and few others are there as well. If we talk of the neighboring city then we have the University of Toronto Mississauga campus there and of course there are many other nearby colleges like Lambton College in Mississauga, Humber College, Seneca College and a lot many others in Toronto because 
Brampton is so close to Mississauga and Toronto. So if you're living in Brampton, it would be very easy for you to commute to any of the colleges in the GTA region. I'm talking about the food and grocery. I wanted to talk about this topic specifically just to highlight how different Brampton is from the Waterloo Kitchener area. So having lived in this region for quite a few number of years now, as the South Asian population has grown, specifically the Indians, so we have seen more number of Indian grocery stores and restaurants in the Kitchener Waterloo region, but still that is nothing compared to what we see there in Brampton. So when in Brampton, you'll definitely see tons and tons of Indian restaurants and needless to say that they offer authentic Indian food. Living in Canada when we miss India, we actually go to Brampton, get some food and sometimes it tastes even better than what we have had in India. So if you want to eat in a restaurant somewhere in Brampton, then it would be much more cheaper than what it would be in the Kitchener or the Waterloo region. And for other groceries, if they are specific to the needs of the Indian people, then you would also find it cheaper over there. And apart from that, you would see a lot of other stores in Brampton as well, such as religious stores, jewelry stores, so many boutiques and shops that offer Indian clothes. So I think you got my point. Anything Indian, you want to talk about Brampton. Okay, now talking about the last point, which is the culture, the diversity and the lifestyle in both of these two cities. So talking of the Kitchener and Waterloo, because most of the population here is Canadian. So you get to see a lot of Canadian vibe here. And of course, this time of the year when we have Christmas and New Year, it is celebrated with a great fashion here. But festivals like Diwali or any other Indian festival is not that vibrant. However, I feel that this would be changing in the next couple of years as a lot of Indian population is moving to this area as well. Talking of temples, Gurdwaras, there are definitely a few here in the Kitchener Waterloo region, but a lot many of them are there in Brampton, of course, because of the Indian community that is present there. So that time of Diwali, if you wanna get that festive vibe, you should definitely visit Brampton. During that time, if you're missing India, then that would certainly help. Talking about the lifestyle, nightlife, there are a lot of clubs and pubs in the Kitchener Waterloo region and same in Brampton as well. But living in Brampton, you have that luxury of ordering food late at night when you have many options available for you. While well, that won't be the case in the Kitchener Waterloo region, you have some of the restaurants, but not many. Alright guys, so that's it for this video. That was all the information that I wanted to convey to help you guys decide which region or which city you want to choose. Both are great cities, but have their pros and cons. It's up to you which of them you want to choose. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, do not forget to click the subscribe button. Thanks a lot for watching this video.